Hi guys, this is I'm Stark, and today we are in the Pyrenees looking at a the long profile of a river. And right now, the first thing I've just seen as I come over to Lac Belus, which is in the Pyrenees, is a massive meander, loads of meanders. Now, obviously, um, if you know, if you've watched my middle course um, video, you would know that meanders are normally found in the middle course, but they're nearly always found in the middle course. But we got to know how do meanders actually form. So the way the meanders form is because there is hard rock in the middle. Now, instead, you can't go. The water cannot go through this hard rock, so it has to go around. Now, this means that it keeps on. It cuts out, and that causes a meander. Now, the other reason is because there's more energy in the middle course of a river than in the upper course of a river. Now, this means instead of the upper course of a river, which I'll go on about later, there is um, vertical erosion, whereas in the middle, there is lateral erosion. Now, this means that it cuts out. Now, we also have to know about the, um, the bends and how much energy there is in a meander. So, there is more energy on the outside of a bend. Now, this means that it's going to keep curving. It's not going to stop. Now, the most, the fastest point of a meander is called the Thalweg. Now, keep on looking at this and you can just see, unfortunately, we're not close enough to see exactly what a Thalweg is. Hopefully, we'll see a Thalweg later on as I look. But um, you can just see here that the, um, the, the, uh, well, the, the shape of the meander. Now, however, on the inner bend, there is l a lot less energy. This means that there's deposition. Now, friction causes the river to flood, so this means there is deposition. Now, this will cause floodplains. And you can see right here, the um, surrounding is all filled with loads of floodplains, and that's mostly because of the deposition that the river has done, has built up to cause, um, to cause these floodplains, which obviously are good for flooding. So we'll stop there and I'll catch up with you later when I find another piece of um, another great part of a river. So now we are still in the middle course, however we're a bit further up um, than when, when before. Now you can tell this because it's a little bit steeper, which means there's a little bit more vertical erosion. Now it's so lateral erosion, otherwise there wouldn't be meanders, however there is vertical erosion meaning that it's steeper. Now I said before that we would look for a thalweg, so as you can see here, there is a lot. There is a faster side on the outside of the bend. However, on the inside, as you can see over there, there is lots of deposition. Now this is obviously because of the friction, as I just said before. Now this is um this is where all the sand and everything is piled up. So now we're going to talk a little about about the bed load and how it differs from in the upper course and the lower course. So you can see that there's already been a bit of attrition, so it's a bit, it's going to be a little bit smaller than in the upper course. Um, this is because of the process of attrition, which is an erosional um, process where the rocks bang together. Now this is why it's a little bit smaller than it was in the upper course. So we are now at the site of Lac Belouze, and in the distance we can see that there are many V-shaped valleys and a lot of vertical erosion is going on. Now vertical erosion means that we are in the upper course of a river and we will try and explore this later on. Um, and I also talk a lot about V-shaped valleys and how they're formed. But as we go around now we can see that it's all very steep and this means that um, the vertical erosion is happening instead of lateral erosion which we would expect in the middle course of a river. There's also a dam round here which it can also produce hydroelectricity but we'll go on that in another video. So now I am in the middle course still, however I've just found a waterfall. Now we've got to know about abrasion, attrition and hydraulic action because these are the erosional processes which undercut the soft rock. Now obviously the uh, soft rock is easier to erode than the hard rock. So we can see the soft rock which is underneath as I just zoom in and we can see the so soft rock is the stuff underneath and the hard rock is on top. Now you can see the soft rock is further back than the hard rock now this is because um, the fact that it's easier to erode. However, what happens is the soft rock will keep on retreating until the hard rock over the top falls down into the punch pool. Now that's the punch pool I just showed there. And this is all the, the results of a punch pool with the stones that have fallen down from the waterfall. Now the waterfall would have probably been back there, which I just showed. And this, is, um, this would have been kept on retreating until it goes in like there. Now the waterfall, this keeps on happening until a gorge is formed. So this waterfall will keep on retreating until a gorge is formed. 
So now we are still in the middle course, but we found something that looks very much like an oxbow lake. Now it's not quite an oxbow lake because the um, the river you can see on the left isn't actually separate from the river on the right. However, it might turn into a, um, an oxbow lake in the future. Now it looks as if it's in the third stage out of four stages of an oxbow lake. So basically the first stage that you would expect is just a simple meander where as I went through before the sediments on the inside of the bend which are dropped off but there's more energy on the outside of the bend so uh, and there's more erosion. Then however there's also um, a, this will then erosion will cause the meander gaps to get closer and closer. Now you can see I've just shown where the, um, they get together and they get together um, but then what would happen is that would probably be cut off by um, by deposition or something would cut them off and then it would be cut off on the other side meaning there was a straight river going down and then there will be a curve so we're still in the middle course here but we can see and hear that there is a lot more energy in the middle course than in the upper course and this is one of the key differences meaning that the middle course can go through lateral erosion so now we have spotted a little bit of a V-shaped valley. Now we're not actually going to be able to make it right into the source today because it would take us absolutely days to get up there. However, we are starting to get into the upper course and we can tell this by the V-shaped valleys. Now I said earlier I'd talk about how V-shaped valleys are formed and I will do now. So in the upper course, the, uh, the river erodes downwards, which is vertical erosion. The river then cuts into the land with processes such as hydraulic action, abrasion and solution. As the river con then continues to erode downwards, the valleys are weathered. This loosens the rocks and the rocks um, which have fallen to the river then contribute to more erosion and that's abrasion. The river then transports the rocks downstream while erosion takes place. Um, this, the channel becomes wider and both V-shaped valleys and interlocking spurs are the resultants. So we are now the closest that we will get to the upper course and you can tell it's the upper course because of the large bed load and the lack of energy in it. Now obviously you can see it's really quite shallow as I've just shown there and um, there's also the massive, the big rocks means that there hasn't been much attrition yet meaning that it is in the upper course. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it because I've definitely enjoyed myself making this video and I want to make more of these kind of videos in the future. Now I will be making my normal videos but leave a comment and express your ideas of what you want me to do. Do you like this style? Do you want me to make more videos? It's all really helpful to me. But now as we look through the parts of where I've been in Lac Belouze and all of this um, more features that are unseen footage, um, please can you visit my website and leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It's all very grateful for it. So thank you. Uh, thank you and see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.